afternoon, everyone. I'm speaking to you, obviously, Saturday afternoon um, in anticipation of Sunday. And uh, it's a couple of weeks since I've managed to speak to you, but here we are again. And we have this wonderful gospel today for Sunday of the, the, the beginning of our Lord's ministry in, uh, in St. Luke's gospel you find that it begins with the very first words of St. Luke's Gospel, in which he describes to the man or the person, whoever it was that he was writing his Gospel for, that he was doing it in order to, to give an ordered account of the great events that were witnessed by eyewitnesses, and he is claiming that he is uh, putting in an ordered fashion what, what they were he was told about the life of Jesus and his ministry. And then you skip over quite a lot of early Luke with John the Baptist and so on and the Magnificat. And the real activity of our Lord himself begins with the uh, time that he spent in the desert, tempted by the devil, tempted in ways to fulfill this work that he sensed he had a calling to do, uh, but tempted to do it in a way that wasn't pleasing to God. So having resolved those issues in the desert, our Lord comes back to Galilee and begins his ministry uh, of preaching the good news. And he quotes from he's handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, wonderful chapter in Isaiah chapter 61, in which the, the coming Messiah is described. And our Lord says really quite plainly at the end of this passage that we have today, this text is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. So he was saying very plainly that his ministry would be the fulfillment that Isaiah had prophesied or that Isaiah had foretold. And the ministry is very uh, practical. We can understand it spiritually as well, but to open the eyes of the blind, to set the prisoners free, to preach the good news to the poor. It's a very strongly directed message of the, the compassion that is at the heart of our Lord's ministry, to come to the aid of people who are in great need. And this is the task that he sets himself. I was very struck reading it by in the final sentence by the word today, this task is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. Now then, so the question obviously to us is, in what sense is this wonderful prophecy, is this wonderful text being fulfilled in, in the church, in the world, in our parish, uh, in my life? And I think that it underlines for me something that certainly the synod process has highlighted for me. I know we still have work to do on the synod process and uh, there will be news of that shortly. But what our Lord is doing here is, is out outlining his mission, the mission that he has come to fulfill as God's only son to, as I've said, to set the prisoners free, to bring salvation. And it really asks us some very serious questions, I would say. What does it mean to preach salvation today? 
how do we how do we do that or how does how does the church do that and clearly from our lord's point of view it's got very practical ramifications that the the poor will be ministered to that the blind those who are blind in any kind of way will be helped to see that the prisoners will be set free so maybe we need to reflect in our own lives on how we might be able to be involved in this ministry today and i think i'd always want to say straight away that that uh we're not necessarily going to be going out and and uh visiting the prisons physically no or, or you know working directly with the poor we can use our resources uh, in those areas those vital areas of ministry and something that i who's the importance of which i would never want to minimize is that we can really make that ministry part of our prayer it may be that you can't get out and do much you physically not well enough or you don't have the, the transport or the, the wherewithal to go out and do these things but to support the church's work with your prayer is is tremendously important i'm rejoicing now that we have got back to our thursdays of adoration um now from after the 10 o'clock mass in the morning until 10 o'clock at night and i i can't again i can't exaggerate the importance of that and i hope and pray that people will use at least part of that time to pray for the the ministry of the passion of the parish the, the the mission that the parish has in our own way and in our own circumstances to bring good news to the poor to prisoners freedom and so on how how can we do that how can we support that that mission it was the mission of jesus it's my mission as an individual it's our mission as a community and it's our mission as a church so there we are it's a good thing to have a bit of a challenge at the beginning of the year and uh let's ask god's grace to be able to fulfill it in the way that the lord wants it for today oh that today you would listen to his voice harden not your hearts as the psalmist says okay leave it there god bless have a good sunday and a good week ahead i just want to mention two things one is that we've been sent copies of a, a monthly magazine called bible alive i have four um complimentary copies and would be happy for anybody for the first come first serve to to take one and just to read it the, the bible alive does a commentary on the readings of each day and one of the great things that the bible alive set up ministry what it does is it supports um the prison ministry and often send it sends copies of bible alive to people in prison and there are from time to time wonderful stories of how people have been helped in our own prisons in this country and abroad by receiving copies of bible alive it's got a lot going for it so um there's details about it in the in the newsletter and the other thing is that with the the blessing of archbishop john there's going to be a uh, a special day in the cathedral st george's cathedral in southwark on healing 
and it's going to be on the 19th of uh, February. I'm involved in it to some extent, and I shall be going there, I'm planning to drive there, and uh, there'll be room in the car if anybody would like to go. It'll be a full day, but it'll be a good day. Uh, it looks very, very worthwhile. And there, again, there's details of that in the, in the newsletter, and there are some cards advertising it at the back of church. Uh, this Ministry of Healing is something that uh, is growing in importance in the church. It's always been there, but somehow the need for it today in today's world seems to be greater than ever. So I recommend it. It'll be time of learning about healing and praying for healing and being prayed with for healing ourselves. Recommended. I think that's it. All the best. Look forward to seeing you over the weekend and in the week ahead.